All right, guys, today is video number five, unit measurements. Um, now, you've done unit measurements probably in science class. You'll probably do it a, a number of times this year in physical science, but it is one of our standards this year, and so we want to make sure that you've got the math behind it. So when you are going from a large unit to a small unit, you're going to multiply, and then when going from a small unit to a large unit, you're going to divide. But I am going to show you the even the multiplication behind all of this. So here's a chart, and this chart is going to be found on your Canvas page as well as my website, just so that you can access it anytime you need. But what I've done here is I've highlighted some of the key um, conversions that are going to be important to you, such as when you're looking right in this area in unit two or in table two, sorry. Um, these that are highlighted, moving from millimeters to centimeters to meters to kilometers. Um, inches to feet to yards to miles and then up here in table one all of this this takes you by every single little prefix um, and it tells you exactly what to multiply it by now we will not be dealing with anything up here in the exa or the auto um, most what we deal with is goes as far as to the milli which you can see is 10 to the negative third and the kilo which is 10 to the positive third so this area right here is where you need to get really familiar, okay? Like, um, and there's ways to memorize this. Um, I know when I taught science a couple years ago, many years ago, it was kings over humans over dogs, and then dogs over cats over mice was a way to actually get that in your head, the order that you needed to go in. Okay, again, this is more tables. Here we've got grams to kilograms, pounds to ounces, which are important. We do any cooking, you deal with this world a lot. And then just another one of the grams to kilograms so you can see it in a different way. So again, here's just another uh, table with working on Celsius to Fahrenheit. Um, and you will have some examples like that to work on. All right, so the example says John rode two kilometers on his bike. His sister Sally rode 3,000 meters on her bike. Who rode the farthest and how much farther did they ride? Answer in kilometers. And then I put in here, use table one or table two to help with the conversions. All right, so I went ahead and I wrote down the conversion. So we know one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. And then I made the actual proportion. One kilometer over 1,000 meters equals X, because we don't know how many kilometers, over 3,000 meters. So I get it. A lot of you could look at this and go, um, okay, I know 1,000 times 3 equals 3,000. So 1 times 3 would equal 3 kilometers. And that is definitely correct. But I want to show you the cross multiplication of this proportion. So you end up with, when you do that, you get your 3,000 meter kilometer in that sense is equal to 1,000 this should say kilometer, meter, kilometer, with an X attached to it. So in the math behind it, you would divide both sides by 1,000. And you would end up with the X is equal to 3 kilometers. So if you can see it right away, that's totally fine. But just wanting you to understand and see where the proportion is behind it. All right, Jessica's measuring two line segments. The first line segment is 30 centimeters long. The second line segment is 500 millimeters long. How long are the two line segments together? And they want the answer in centimeters. Again, I put on here, use table one or table two to help with the conversions. All right, so again, I put the conversions over there. So one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. And then I did the proportion here, so you can see the math behind it. 1 centimeter over 10 millimeters is equal to x centimeters, because we don't know how many, over 500 millimeters. So again, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. And when I do that, I get 10 x, technically millimeters, centimeters, if we want to put those down, is equal to 500 millimeters, centimeters, okay? And then because I'm trying to figure out this X right here, just like we've been doing a ton, I would divide both sides by 10 and I would be left with X is equal to 50 centimeters. 
Now, I'm not done because I haven't actually answered the question. I've just done the conversion of 500 millimeters to be 50 centimeters. So now I just have to do the simple little math problem here, which is 30 centimeters plus 50 centimeters, which gives me a total of 80 centimeters. So the two line segments, when they're added together, is equal to 80 centimeters. All right, Stephen wakes up at school, for school, at 6.30 in the morning. If school starts at 7.25, how long does he have from the time he wakes up until school starts? Okay, so if I was tackling this problem, I would go, all right, so between 6.30 to 7.30 equals one hour, right? Well, I'm looking at between 6.30 and 7.25, so then, really, all I have to do is figure out what's the difference between 725 and 730, which is 5 minutes. So this time, then, is 5 minutes less, which would be 55 minutes. All right, Stephanie and her best friend, Brianne, went to see a movie. It started at 145 and ended at 340. How long was the movie? So again, I'm going to play this little bit by little bit, and I would say, okay, well, I know that 145 to 345 is equal to two hours. So I'm looking at 145 to 340. So that is five minutes less. So that equals one hour and 55 minutes. And that's really all you need to know at this place in ninth grade. Like, there are ways to actually show the subtraction, but at this point, we just need to make sure you know how to find the difference of that time. All right, Ezra's stuffed animal has a mass of 300 grams. How many milligrams is a stuffed animal? And I put in here, use table one, or really in this sense, table two, for help with unit conversions, because... The prefixes are all the same when it comes to meters, grams, etc. All right, so I went ahead and I wrote the conversions for you. One gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. So then I set up the proportion so that you could see that. Um, so we are going to do our cross multiplication. And as you can see, we're going to take 300 times 1,000 and set it equal to that X, you know, milligrams, basically. So 300 times 1,000 is 300,000. So that is how many milligrams this stuffed animal is. You just had to multiply them together. All right, guys, so it's fall. So this problem is basically true. Dr. Spears goes to Eagle Fork Pumpkin Patch and picks out a pumpkin that has a mass of 6,000 grams. How many kilograms is the pumpkin? Then it asks, because of course, if you're going to a pumpkin patch and you're picking out a pumpkin, you gotta pay for it. If she has to pay $1.50 per, per kilogram, sorry, how much will she have to pay for the pumpkin? So I put in here, use table one or table two for help with unit conversions. Okay, I went ahead and put the conversions there for you. So one kilogram equals 1,000 grams, and I put the proportion for you. One kilogram to 1,000 grams is equal to X amount of kilograms to 6,000 grams. So we're going to do our cross multiplication. And I get it. The more you do this, the fastest, faster you're going to get at this. So we know that 1,000 X the kilogram grams, is equal to 6,000. Um, so then we're going to divide both sides by 1,000. And we get X is equal to 6. So this pumpkin weighs 6 kilograms. But I'm not done. Because it says if she has to pay $1.50 per kilogram, how much will she have to pay for the pumpkin? So the next thing I need to do is I need to take that $1.50 and multiply it by 6. All right, so real quickly, 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 5 is 30. Carry the 3. 6 times 1 plus 3 would be 9. And move the decimal over twice. So that pumpkin costs $9. All 
All right, it happens. All right, so true type of story for at least Dr. Spears this summer. Um, over in Europe, they deal with Celsius. They don't talk about Fahrenheit. So this problem says, if it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside, what is the temperature in Celsius? And then I put in here, use table 16 to help with that conversion. All right, so I went ahead and I wrote out the formula and the joys about that table 16 that I've included for you, it has both. So if you need to go from um, Celsius to Fahrenheit, you can do that. But like I said, true story for me this summer because I kept talking in Fahrenheit and they didn't have that conversion in their head. So we know we have 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to go right here where this F is. So Celsius equals 80 minus 32. Now we're just plugging it into a, a formula. No big deal here, guys. Continuing the problem, C equals 48 times 5 over 9. So your final answer would be Celsius in this is equal to 26 and 2 thirds um, degrees. Or, for you decimal lovers, 26.6 repeating degrees Celsius. That would be the answer to this if you were ever asked how to convert. But these formulas are very, very important because we do live in a world where some places go by Celsius, some places go by Fahrenheit. 